Please be seated. Thank you for welcoming uh, our honored guests. We have some singers for you, but before uh, they sing, Congressman Sonny Montgomery of Mississippi, Barbara Bush. International friends and guests to the National Prayer Breakfast, let us just stop for a moment and think of what has happened in the world this past year. Indeed, we welcome this day of prayer to once again give thanks to our Lord for the wonderful blessings that He has bestowed upon us. In the words of the 77th Psalm, verse 14. You are the God, God who does marvelous deeds, the Lord who brings nations to acknowledge your power. Yes. For the most dramatic events of our lifetime, the rebirth of nations long covered by darkness, the reunion of East and West upon their shared heritage, this was not done by the force of arms. This was brought by the force of faith. It began when a group of Polish workers insisted upon erecting a cross of their shipyard. It drew strength from those who fell, martyrs, like Father Papalusko, who, even in death, could not be silenced. Last summer, Marilyn and I and two of our children prayed at his grave, and now we witness his victory. Like many before him, he taught the most profound lesson of our time, that faith, family, and freedom are Destroy anyone, and the other two are threatened as well. Strengthen anyone, and the others are revived along with it. That's why the bogus messiahs of this century tried to shackle religion and ruin family life because they knew their monster states could never enslave believing families. Now, bells ring out again from the ancient churches in the Kremlin, voicing to the heavens their prayers of thanksgiving. Yet even at this season of rejoicing, there is still danger. People of faith should not ignore it. For the totalitarianisms of this century evil as they were, were only symptoms of a deeper malady in the Western world. It was an emptiness of the spirit that, by denying humanity's creator, denied human limits and human dignity as well. That denial built the extermination camps in the Gulag. That denial remains amid the rubble of empires. It persists in our own institutions and distorts the face of our culture. My friends, it challenges all of us. For the spiritual vacuum at the heart of what Paul Johnson called modern times will be filled one way or another, filled either by a revival of faith or by some new fanaticism promising heaven on earth. Now, after all we've seen, after all we have been given, after so much has been done for us, surely we should now be the people of hope with confidence in the Lord's governance of world affairs. Thank you and God bless you. Chairman of the Senate Prayer Group, we the President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you all.
seated. Slava. Thank you. And thank you, Senator Heflin, for such a lovely introduction. To Dan and Marilyn, the Vice President, Mrs. Quayle, to the members of my cabinet here, to the members of Congress all, so many here in faith, General Powell, uh, especially to our host, Ted Stevens, to our dear friend, Billy Graham, and uh, to all gathered. Let me first just say a special greeting to uh, Prime Minister Ratu Mara of Fiji. This is not his first time here. I'm sure it won't be his last, but he's an inspiration to all of us that know him and consider him a friend, as I do. May I salute our other guests from overseas, and though sometimes you might feel like it, uh, we don't consider you overseas, those who serve in the state legislature, and we're glad you all are here. Uh, <laughs> four principles, four ideas, really, inspire America. Uh, and I, I think they're all here this morning, reflected in one way or another, freedom, family, and faith that Dan Quayle talked about, and to that I would add fellowship. So many people brought together by a shared spirit, the simple joy, of praying to God. Slava, that was a tremendously moving story in one of the most dramatic moments in recent history. And if sound, you referred to sound, if sound has anything to do with entry into heaven, I believe you can choose the fluffiest, most generous cloud in the firmament up there when you get there. And thank you for your inspiring message. But I think you reminded us all of the powerful role that prayer has played in the unprecedented events of the past year. Uh, since we last met, nations have been reshaped and the lives have been restored throughout the land, throughout the entire world. And the force that unites them, as we've heard here today from the Vice President, to General Powell, is faith in God. The link they share is prayer. And when I last stood here, as Colin reminded us, uh, we were at war, compelled by a deep need for God's wisdom, uh, we began to pray. And we prayed for God's protection in what we undertook, uh, for God's love to fill hearts, and for God's peace to be the moral North Star that guided us. Abraham Lincoln said, and we remember it, everyone in this room wouldn't remember it, I've been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I have nowhere else to go. And in his example, we came together for a special national day of prayer. And Americans of every creed turned to our greatest power to bring us peace. Peace which passeth all understanding. And at the end of the war, we prayed as one during our national days of thanksgiving. Let us pray that as a people, we will continue to bring the power of prayer to bear on all the challenges we confront. And let us pray that we will strengthen the values that this great land was founded on, that we will reverse any threat of moral decline, and that we will dedicate ourselves to the ethic of service, of being what I call a point of light to someone else, someone in need. And in this work, we are not without inspiration. We need look no further than the handful of men who became heroes by their courage, their strength, and above all, their faith. Last of whom returned in December, I'm talking about our hostages. And in brutalizing conditions, as we've heard this morning, they prayed together daily in what they called the church of the locked door. They unwove floor mats in order to make rosaries. Now these men who every day lived the story of Job, and treasured their first book, the Bible. And when Terry Anderson was released, uh, one of the first things he did was to thank strangers across the world who had prayed that he be set free. Your prayers made a big difference, said this man, who in prison had rediscovered the faith that sets and keeps men free. There's another story from last year's news that tells of the transformation of faith. 
Uh, while it's a story familiar to all of you, it's, it's intensely personal to Barbara and me and to, and to others in this room. We lost a dear friend last March, Lee Atwater, a restless, fiercely driven, fun, a fun-loving good old boy from South Carolina who rode life as hard and fast as he could. But he also lived a kind of miracle because his, his illness reintroduced him to something he'd put aside, his own faith. And in his last months, he worked intensely to come to grips with his faith. And through reading the Bible and through prayer, uh, he learned that, uh, as he put it, what was missing in society what was, what was what was missing in me, a little heart and a lot of brotherhood. Uh, he was so right. Prayer has a place, not only in the life of every American, but also in the life of our nation. For we are truly one nation under God. Uh, may God, this, God bless this very special gathering. For those of you who've come from overseas, for those of you from across our land, from those of you right here in the, in the uh, nation's capital, uh, thank you for participating in this celebration of faith. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. You know, our Constitution says that when Congress is in session, and will you please remain in your places and allow the President and the Vice President and their parties to leave? President Bush, Barbara, Vice President Quayle, Marilyn, Viacondias, God go with you all. Thank you very much.